With around 30,000 fans clambering for a season ticket, the conversation has turned again to expansion of St James's Park or the possibility of building a new stadium in a different location. And a significant factor in all of this are these Grade 1 listed buildings, Leesers Terrace, which sit directly east of the stadium. And it's these buildings here which have played a significant part in hindering the expansion of St James's Park and it's made the stadium lopsided because they haven't been able to develop the East Stand here any higher than what it is now. And there are three main reasons why Leesers Terrace is causing problems for the development of, uh, of St James's Park. The first reason is it has protections in law to have access to light and that applies to any building that has access to light for a period of 20 years or more. The second problem is that just on the road here to my left hand side Leesers Terrace sits in what's called the Leesers Conservation Area, an area of land which includes Leesers Park in front of me which again has uh, conservation protection. And thirdly the building's environmental structure and environment has protections and that can sometimes and ordinarily inhibit uh, any other buildings to encroach on that structure or environment. In this video I'm going to take a closer look between the relationship of Leesers Terrace and Newcastle United and in particular St James's Park to discuss and have a little bit of a closer look to see if those um, restrictions can be overcome and in particular can Leesers Terrace be demolished or is Leesers Terrace just too important to the culture and history of Newcastle and us Newcastle United fans just need to develop a sense of perspective. It's coming up. Welcome back, my name's Eddie, welcome to my channel Tyneside Life where I look at football but also the history and the culture of Newcastle and the general Tyneside area. If any of that appeals to you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you'll get a notification every time I release a new video. So before I get into the nuts and bolts of this video, I would encourage you to watch the two that I've done just immediately prior to releasing this one. One is about um, possible expansion of the stadium by moving the pitch northwest 20 meters or so. The other video is in relation to if they had to build a new stadium in another location, why I think it's extremely unlikely they'll use the arena land which is about to be vacated in about a year's time. So I would encourage you to watch those videos first or in conjunction with this so you have a more rounded and broader understanding of the complexities of what's going on uh, in relation to the um, uh, Newcastle United and its relationship with the city. So back to Leesers Terrace here if you don't know this uh, particular building here was built uh, in the height of the Industrial Revolution when there was a, um, a quartet of guys who uh, redeveloped Newcastle, Richard Granger, John Clayton, John Dobson and Thomas Oliver. And this particular building was uh, developed or designed by Thomas Oliver and the builder Richard Granger built it between 1829 and 1834. It's in a huge oblong shape with a, with a large courtyard in the middle with two uh, stable entrances into the courtyard. Leesers Terrace sits in the Leesers Conservation Area and is described as the most imposing Georgian development in the city because of its monumentality, granite sandstone, ashlar facade, and its three storeys set in a basement plinth. The building now serves as student halls of residence, office space for Newcastle University, but also for other private residents. And the building was sold on by a development company back in 2019 to a um, a Middle Eastern consortium but it's partly owned by them and by Newcastle University. Try as I might, I've taken it as far as I can to identify exactly who owns it from the Middle East. Um, I, take, I contacted the company that used to own it, they wouldn't disclose any information. I went through the land registry but you hit a brick wall with that. Is it the Saudi Arabian PIF? Who knows? Is it Qatar, Bahrain, United Arab, Arab Emirates? could be anybody from the Middle East that's as far as I can get so any speculation that the Saudi Arabians own this is, is exactly that it's speculation so what exactly is a listed building Newcastle has its fair share of listed buildings grade 1 grade 2 and grade 3 and they all mean slightly different things so statutorily it's protected against the unauthorized demolition alteration or extension it is and it also has special architectural or historic interest 
Ultimately, uh, listed buildings are overseen by the Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport. And the Secretary of State is advised by Historic England in relation to any decisions they're going to make about a listed building. So what is a Grade 1 listed building like Leeser Terrace? Well, a Grade 1 built listed building is a building of exceptional historical interest. About 2.5% of all listed buildings in the UK are Grade 1. Other examples in Newcastle are St Nicholas's Cathedral, uh, Bessie Surtees House and the Alderman Fenwick House uh, at the bottom of Pilgrim Street which I recently did a video about. Grade 2 listed buildings are particularly important on more than just a special interest. An example of Grade 2 build, uh, listed buildings in Newcastle are Old Eldon Square and it was the Grade 2 listed buildings around there which were demolished to make way for the Eldon Square shopping centre. Grade 3 listed buildings are buildings of just special interest. So it's really quite complex. What I'm going to attempt in this video is to, to draw a balance, to, be, to give a more rounded understanding of the relationship between the history of a city and uh, buildings like this, stadiums, where if we look at it purely from the eyes of a football fan, in particular a Newcastle United fan, it just seems obvious that 30,000 people wanted a season ticket. This building's a hindrance. Knock it down so we can extend the stand. Uh, life is in, in development and town planning is far more complex than that and but when you look at things from other angles for in particular in terms of conservation groups or Newcastle City Council they have to make decisions based on what's best for the city as a whole because if we like it or not there's probably probably going to be an equal volume of people who really don't like football or the club or how it dominates the skyline or how it encroaches on our historical aspects of the city. So Newcastle City Council have to have, have to strike that balance to do what's best overall. That might mean, um, when they eventually come to look at this, that there might be a wider economic benefit to remove part or all of this building to expand the stadium. And that's something I'm gonna look at here. So first of all, can a, a grade one listed building be demolished? In broad terms, yes. They are usually exceptional circumstances. For example, they're in a bad state of repair and it's just not cost effective to repair them or they're com uh, causing some sort of safety risk or danger to the public. So I'm going to show you around a little bit as we go around the back of the building and go through the court, one of the coach entrances, you'll see that the inside or the back of the building within the court square looks completely different from the front. Whereas we have here these beautiful sandstone blocks at the back of the building, they're just ordinary bricks. And there's a building in there which has been converted into two flats. Uh, those were the, uh, that building there was the actual uh, stable for the horses. If we take a look inside the property and go through one of the front doors, we'll see that immediately goes into just a corridor system, basically. The inside has been completely gutted. Um, it bears no resemblance to the original layout of the building. And they're just um, individual student halls of residence now, apart from the sections which are owned by um, private residents. If you'd like to see more videos like this and be notified the moment I release the next one, make sure you hit the subscribe button. But there's nothing glamorous about the building from the back or the inside. The beauty of this old Georgian building is the front here, the old facade. So we've established that there are times and occasions where a grade one listed building can be demolished in, excep in exceptional circumstances, but can leaves us terrace be demolished? Well, that's going to be um, quite a lengthy process. And let's just hypothetically say that the club want to expand the East Stand and they want to look at some sort of ownership of the building, possibly purchasing it, and to look to have it either partially, just the front end demolished, or the whole building. Bearing in mind, Mayor Dad Gadusi has promised to the fans uh, that they're not going to build a new stadium and they're going to exhaust every possibility first to try and expand St James's Park. And personally, I take the owners to their word that they're going to try and do that. I have been speaking to a source in local government. I can't reveal their name, but this is what they've told me that, let's say hypothetically tomorrow, the club wanted to expand the stadium on this side and they wanted to get rid um, some or all of Leeser's Terrace and they put an application form in tomorrow. Um, there'd be approximately 18 months of discussion, both at a political level, but also with um, developers where they're going back and forwards, having meetings and having discussions about that. 
all being well and uh, everybody involved in those discussions say yeah I think there might be a possibility then they put an application in principle forward to the government and that can take about 12 months where various leaders um, and stakeholders will look at the application and at the end of that roughly 12 month period will give a thumbs up or a thumbs down in principle as to whether they can go ahead with their plan so now we're talking about two and a half years after that then it goes down to planners and architects to put drones together to put plans together all that takes a couple of years with all the meetings involved the backwards and forwards the um, local government representative has told me that hypothetically if they tomorrow wanted to uh, execute some sort of plan like this to demolish Lisa's terrace it could take about five years for eventually hypothetically to say yes let's do it let's say five years time roughly we'll get a thumbs up it's then going to take a year or two to develop plans before they even start building so whatever we think about the expansion or new stadiums the club have said they're going to explore uh, expansion here first you could be looking at six or seven years before anything gets started and the only way that any development is going to happen here with a possible partial or full dem demolition of Lisa's Terrace is that they're going to have to submit plans to government eventually to be crossing the desk of the Secretary of State for Culture to show a plan that there's going to be a wider economic benefit for the whole of Newcastle City. So if, if you would ask the question can this happen? Can these buildings be demolished to extend St James's Park? My opinion is there's a small possibility but it's going to be extremely difficult but certainly very time consuming and when you take all of this into consideration for those out there who are still tempted to see it just by the arena land first of all watch the video I did but also take into consideration the complexities involved in trying to extend St James's Park and how long that's going to be because in my opinion the arena land to be eventually bought and developed for a new stadium is negligibly nil I just can't see it whatsoever what I am hopeful of is that there's a chink of light that something can be done with the east stand here and um, they might not even need to look at demolishing uh, Lisa's Terrace because with the idea uh, put forward by Sean Wade and the plans that were put forward by John Henry by moving the pitch northwest you might not even have to do that but I hope this video has put into perspective the complications and difficulties when looking at Lisa's Terrace and its relationship with St James's Park um, it's possible uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below um, thank you to everybody who's become a Tyneside Life member I do give priority to those who are members uh, in uh, comment discussions but uh, I read all the comments and I value everybody who leaves a comment but let us know what you think below if you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more videos like this don't forget to hit the subscribe button till next time catch you later